Well, this uh, recruiting, this recruiting season, uh, really, this starts. The whole cycle starts uh, <laughs> normally in February, but we didn't have that opportunity when when this when we all got hired here in uh, in April. So uh, we went through spring ball, uh, formulated a plan in May. Matt Troxell did a wonderful job with our numbers and uh, and formulated a plan in terms of what we need to fill our roster with and uh, uh, gives us areas which we can uh, focus on, give us specificity on where we're going. And so we started with a plan in May and we stuck to it and, and it worked out worked out really well with what uh, with uh, with our, with this class. Um, it was a great job by all the coaches involved. Uh, starts with Tyson Munns, who uh, worked tireless, tirelessly on six, uh, six or seven recruiting weekends. Uh, while we were all out on the road recruiting, he was, he was busy making arrangements, getting flights arranged, uh, taking care of a, a really well-planned out uh, weekends that, that were very successful. And then in addition to uh, uh, Matt Troxell, who before he left, did a great job uh, uh, recruiting, uh, giving us a base for what we're gonna, what we're doing. Uh, David Fafia, Fia Fia, excuse me, down in Salt Lake, and Steve Fafita down there. Uh, Roger Cooper, he he signed ten players today alone, and he picked up a lot of slack. Uh, did a great job. Cam Yancey out in Southern California, uh, did a, did a wonderful job. So the guys went out, like I said, stuck to the plan, and. Uh, uh, really, really followed through with everything that we wanted to do. Some highlights with this class. Uh, the first and foremost is uh, uh, we said we wanted to put a, a wall up around the state of Idaho, and we signed six players from the state of Idaho. And that is more than uh, the other two in-state schools in our nearest school combined. And that's something that we said we wanted to do, and then we wanted to uh, establish Idaho State and Salt Lake and we did that. We signed seven players out of the state of Utah, and and that is uh, that was a focus of our recruiting. The guys did a great job of that. We signed four JC transfers, uh, four JC or transfer players, I should say, uh, and three of them are enrolled now. And that's critical when you have older older kids. You want to get them in the winter program, and and they're under uh, Coach Ryan's workouts right now, and and they'll that'll benefit us. Um, and then, uh, in addition, we had uh, nine total signees on the early signing day. Uh, I know we only announced seven. That's because two of them signed, but didn't want to be announced till today, which was their prerogative. But uh, that for Idaho State, I think that was a that was a big deal. Uh, the breakdown: we had nine on offense, thirteen on defense. Uh, we signed five offensive linemen, which was a definite need. Uh, four high school, one junior college, and uh, the junior college players here now. Uh, we signed a high school tight end, uh, two high school wide receivers, and a high school running back. On, on defense, uh, with 13 players, uh, we signed three defensive backs, one uh, junior college who's here right now, and two high school players, a uh, linebacker, uh, one JC who will, in, who will get here during the summer, and three high school, so four linebackers. And then on the defensive line, we signed five high school D linemen and one transfer. And so that was kind of the... Uh, uh, the highlights, uh, highlights of his class. So with that. You mentioned kind of your strategy or your game plan for this class, and I guess what, what was that and what was kind of your, um, your focus? Well, just uh, the positions we filled were exactly what our what our focus was. We didn't stray from the from the plan. We didn't we didn't we didn't rob Peter to pay Paul. You know, for any position we had we had numbers uh, at positions that we needed to fill. And and you're looking two to three years down the road, and that's what we got done because we have a big junior class and next year which will be a big senior class in two years and uh give these give some of these guys a couple of years in a program before they need to contribute but uh that that's what we're that's what we're looking at a little bit so uh like i said the plan was uh uh you know basically you want to you our our plan is first try to control idaho second uh go to salt lake um and then try to get linemen uh Linemen and, and non skill I shouldn't say non skill but linemen, bigger guys above the snow line, and then supplement it with skill from Southern California, or from from out, outer areas, I should say, not Southern California. So uh, that, once again, gives us focus where 
we're not looking for offensive linemen in Southern California because we can find them up here. But if one comes along, we'll take it. But you know what I'm saying? We're, this is where we're going to look first. Around the holidays, we talked about how important it is to get a cycle started with your guys because you, know, you came in April and never yeah. really got that full cycle. Yep. So we're starting that cycle. How, how's it? How's it going? Good. We're good. We'll uh, we'll have a we'll we'll uh, you know the next couple of days. Mike Ferreter is taking over, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow. But he's taking over the numbers. The, he's he's our numbers guy, and uh, we will have our plan in place pretty much. Uh, uh, in, within the next few days for where we're going to go recruiting. And that's a, it's a very fluid situation because it goes, uh, you know, we may have some attrition at the end of the spring semester and that changes your numbers. Uh, but you, you, you always, you got, it's a working, it's always a working situation, but you have to have a plan uh, starting uh, uh, as, soon as, as soon as today's over. Today's, today's the beginning of a, of, a new, of a new cycle in terms of recruiting and that'll give us focus when we go out in May what we're looking for. Uh, no quarterbacks in this class probably for the first time in a few years um, was quarterback something that you addressed and didn't get or are you uh, yeah. comfortable with the depth you have currently one we're, we're, we're comfortable with the depth uh, you know Tanner's obviously a senior and then we have uh, 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 Gunner is a junior and Drew Cash is a freshman um, uh, that's not to say that, that we weren't looking and we're, we're not still looking but uh, in terms of where we were um, uh, when we made when we made our plan, you know, the, the situation was Robert Quinsland was still here and he transferred to Carroll. So that that kind of, you know, we kind of went back and forth on what to do there. So so there's a little bit, you know, still looking uh, could happen, could not. I guess just any um, overall thoughts on your your first. Recruiting class. No, I, I think uh, I said the credit goes to the staff. I mean, they they did a great job. They uh, stuck to the plan. You know, when you when you make when you when you plan it out and and have structure and all, it, it, it's it's never easy, but it's it's easier. You know, and you know what you're looking for. And and once we get a commitment at a certain position, we mark it off and say we're not looking there anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, and all the guys did a did a did a fabulous job with that. And once again, Tyson with his. Uh, uh, Tyson Munz, our director of operations, and slash even his title, it's recruiting coordinator. Uh, he did a great job with the weekends, and that helped. It's your first year having a recruiting class for yourself. Um, so how are you, how are you feeling? Are you kind of more excited? Are you more? You know, it, it's like it's like you get into these 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 press conference press conferences with the coaches and everybody. Oh, the greatest! We got the number one class. You know, well, shoot, you know, these guys still got to come play in, in a couple of years. How many are going to contribute next year? You know, I don't know. May, you know, you, you expect the, the transfer and the and the JC guys, but you know, you, you you don't know. Yeah, it's it's great. We all sit and watch film together, and we all agree we like the kid, and, that, and that's all you can ask for. You know, uh, if someone if if someone didn't like him, you know, we go back and look at him again, and we did a lot of evaluation. Uh, as a staff and as and as offensive and defensive units, and and I think that's important for everybody to have a lot, lot of sets of eyes on guys as we uh, uh, as we recruit them and, and evaluate them. It looks like you got players from kind of um, uncharted <laughs> states, I guess Illinois, Florida, New Jersey. Um, yeah, this is a this is a something that I'll. I'll, I'll mention tonight when when we you know present this to the to the public, uh, but when I when I was uh, hired here, uh, one of the first within the first couple of weeks I had a uh, uh, Jeff Tingey and Ken Tingey and and President Bayless we all had a little lunch and and visited and you know just talked, and one thing President Bayless said was. Uh, in his own, you know, his own particular way, it's like, hey, uh, you got to think outside the box at Idaho State. You know, don't just get, don't just get in here. Think outside the box. So, you know, after that meeting, went to the staff and you know, hey, what did you guys talk about? And I, I specifically brought that up, and didn't think it, uh, you know, okay. Told, well, come middle of or early January, Roger Cooper, our our linebacker coach comes up and he goes okay you said think outside the box I mean and I was like okay here we go you know because Coop, Coop thinks outside the box anyways and uh, he goes I got a guy in New Jersey so we got to look at him I said well, have you talked to him he goes yeah and, you know he started recruiting him and uh, 
that's what we did. You know, we ended up recruiting a kid and uh, uh, and actually told President Bayless about that. He he came by one of our recruiting dinners one night to say hi, and and uh, I told him that. I think he got a little chuckle out of it. And then uh, Teron Carey, uh, uh, that's Terrence Carey, uh, Terrence Carey's brother, TC. Uh, that was a that was a no brainer. He visited up here a lot of times. Uh, he's not unfamiliar with the uh, with the area and with the team and and frankly with uh, with some of the coaches you know and and uh, you know he knew coach Faraday know coach Cooper uh, knew uh, Steve Fafita you know and 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 so and he even knew some of the kids on the team still some of the seniors so so that was a, a good deal and then uh, as we were looking for a junior college linebacker uh, once again Coop uh, Likes to be a national recruiter, I guess. I don't know. He, he found uh, found a young man at College of DuPage uh, that uh, that finally we got him. He visited last week, and he was our last visit, and uh, and we got him to commit. And so he'll be he'll be a pretty good fit. Did you know kind of the the coaching changes that have gone gone down this winter? Did that have any effect, or did that cause any? difficulties in the process no not at all and and you know really the 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 one that uh that affected more than anything was matt troxel leaving you know uh he uh, so roger cooper had to absorb some of his guys as did mike ferreter like i said we'll talk about those guys all tomorrow but uh no you know it was uh, uh there was no effect other than that and and you know frankly when you present a plan to a young man on a visit, uh, you uh, you know he's he sees what we're doing offensively, sees what we're doing defensively. Where uh, you know whoever's coaching it, you know, really doesn't matter. But we, I had at least I had an idea who we were going to hire, and I could uh, you know explain to the young man here's who's who's going to be coaching you. Um, you said your plan was Utah and Idaho guys, so. Mm -hmm. Is it because you want to keep that family feel keep, and keep well, the community feel? Well, yeah, pride in Idaho, you know, and plus uh, it's it's two hours down to Salt Lake. It's three hours to Boise. I mean, that's that's a that's a big population and a lot of players in a in a in a, in a short distance drive. And then obviously, uh, you know, one of the things we're most proud of is we we took another uh, uh, we signed another scholarship to a young man uh, from Pocatello. And we think that's important too. You know, take uh, uh, the players that we feel can play in the Big Sky Conference, and 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 sign them. And it's even better to have them from from home. And and the best thing about uh, about Garrett Crane uh, is, uh, uh, you know, I guess they had another player that was pretty good. And uh, so everybody I talked to said, well, we all double teamed that guy, but the other guy killed us. And the other guy they were talking about is Crane. So I don't know what that other guy did. He was pretty good, but maybe he'll come back. <laughs> um, do you know how many of these? I guess there are 22 of them. How many of them are going to uh, be gone on missions? We have we have a handful of potential mission kids. That's that'll be determined as we as we go along. Um, uh, you know, there's there's there was there was one uh, that was uh, when we. Brought him in on his visit, wasn't going on his mission. Then he committed. Then he was going on his mission. Then he said, "Well, no, I'm not going to go on my mission." So, uh, it, that's sometimes a fluid situation. It sometimes is a pretty solid situation, and and we respect their decision either way. And and whenever they're ready to tell us what they're going to do is fine. I guess how many how many scholarships do you have? Um, do you have left, or how many roster spots do you have left that you can fill between now and the season? Uh, we have a we have a good. We could still, uh, well, we still have. We could still sign up. There could be three more names that that get added uh, added to this list that we're still working on through some particulars right now. But uh, um, uh, you know, we're getting we're getting full. You know, but we still you like to have eighty five kids on aid, and that's what that's what our goal is. You have to have numbers because you know it's a it's a violent game. Kids get dinged up, but Willie, really, I'd say they uh, maybe if someone breaks a shoelace during the game. We got to put a sub in, right? So, uh, I guess if if you want to run down each each signee and say a couple of words about him, you can. Obviously, obviously, you don't have to. I might bore you guys to death. There's a lot of names. 
uh, maybe some key ones. To talk start, about. yeah. That I'll, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, well, definitely the transfers and the the guys that are here now, Preston Holfelts, uh, uh, red shirt at Snow College last year, uh, big offensive lineman that is going to come in and press for time, uh, help help replace uh, uh, Chase Collins at the tackle position or, or even Skyler at the guard. Christian McFarland, who uh, uh, is from Northern California, and, and Aaron Pryor uh, did his, uh, uh, Aaron Pryor, who's a full-time coach with us, uh, that was his first uh, his first official recruit and signee. So he, uh, he did a wonderful job uh, working with him. And Christian uh, wasn't a done deal until uh, uh, the morning of the, the early signing period. We were, we were calling around and trying to, trying to, uh, Get him on board, but but once again, Aaron Pryor did a great job recruiting him and uh, and and getting him in the in the program here. Uh, Kanoa Fuyava is a transfer from BYU, defensive lineman, and I think he will be a freshman. He redshirted down there last year. He's in the program now, and he's uh, uh, going to be pushing for playing time. Uh, just BYU wasn't a fit for him, and he. Uh, uh, you know, wanted to transfer, and we and we got him in. Uh, it was one of those things where he came to school sight unseen. He signed sight unseen, and and came up here and with his dad, and and we got him going into school. Then our other JC player, Nick uh, uh, Nick Wadsworth from College of DuPage, um, like I said, he visited last weekend. He'll graduate with his AA in uh, in May, and then he will uh, he will he'll probably be here during the summer. You have to do that with JC guys. Um, uh, you know, as far as the Idaho kids talked about Crane, uh, Jennings and Funkhauser, two guys that I've known since they were sophomores at Gooding. And I've seen them come along and, and uh, they're uh, uh, going to be two fun guys to have. Small town, rural Idaho kids, that's, you got to have those guys. you got to have those guys. Uh, and DeMonte Horton, uh, you know, the thing with the Idaho guys, we signed three first, all, first team All-Staters. That would be Crane Jennings and then DeMonte Horton, who's a big receiver uh, um, out of Skyview, out in, out in, uh, out in Boise. Uh, going down the list there, you know, we, we touched on Terrence Jones, the, the young man from New Jersey, Tron Carey. Uh, we had two DBs we signed out of uh, uh, Southern California, um, Devin Dabich and Alec Flanagan. Uh, Flanagan chose Idaho State over San Jose, Air Force, and Navy. He had options there. Uh, Devin Dabich, uh, interesting story there. He, uh, he committed for, and was going to sign on the early signing period. Uh, but he hadn't visited. He didn't visit until January. So he signed side and see. Now, these two are teammates with Trey Green, who's on the roster right now. So there's a, there's a coach from a, a, a school in Oregon that's in our conference. Uh, that was at the school talking to him. And so he's talking to a group of players from Diamond Ranch High School. And he's like, okay, so what are you gonna, what are you gonna do? He goes, well, I'm, gonna, I'm signing with Idaho State. He goes, okay, what do you do, what do you do? He goes, so you're gonna sign with Idaho State? Yeah. Have you been there? No, I haven't visited. And you're gonna sign with Idaho State? Yeah, he goes, have you visited Pocatello? You haven't been to Pocatello? No, I haven't, but I'm signing with Idaho State. Okay, boom, 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 boom. So, you're going to sign with Idaho State, and you've never been to Pocatello. He is, yes, I'm in. So, it's like, so now I don't do that with other schools when we talk about have you ever been here or there? That's, you know, why are you telling me about Idaho State? But that happened. And that's one of my favorite stories with Devin Dabich. I told him I was going to say that to everybody because I said that's a great story. Okay. Another one, Spen uh, Spencer Tatafu. Uh, now he's one that's probably going to go on a mission. He had a lot of offers from the Big Sky Conference when he said he was going on a mission. Uh, everyone pulled it. Well, we stuck with ours. He committed to us. Uh, the minute he committed to us, uh, the school, uh, same school that I was talking about, came back and offered him. Why? Because we offered him and committed him. And the uh, kid stuck with us. So. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stories like that. Ty Metcalf, there was two conference schools telling him on the early signing day in, uh, uh, in December, don't sign, don't sign, don't sign. And, uh, and those schools were very, were closer to, uh, to him than here. And he, nope, he said, I'm signing. 
And so we got a lot of stories like that, and, and, it's, and it's really good. A lot of these kids uh, believed in our coaches and believed in the message that we are sending and um, fired up about it. That, that's the best thing about it. There's a lot of guys that, that want to be here, you know, and they're not settling for Idaho State. They want to be here, so it's going to be fun. That sense of belief is sticking with your recruiting class too, not well, just your. Well, I hope so. I mean, that's, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you one more. Uh, Ruger Jennings, great. This is a great one. Uh, he got invited to a game. We were away. The home team invited him. He asked the coach, can I wear my Idaho State shirt? And the coach said, well, thank you. Boom, done. So that's, that's the kind of guys we got. So I, that's one of the greatest stories ever right there so i love i love these guys some funny things went on with this bunch so hopefully they'll be good when they get here we'll see all right